feels like a regular old garage door opener or something, but really cheap. Let's see if it actually takes a picture. There it goes. Hi there. So today we'll be taking a look at this. So it's basically a remote control shutter so that you can take pictures for, from your smartphone without being actually touching the smartphone or anything. So this is just like a remote control basically and it's in the box upside down. It says camera 360 iOS Android. So I'm just going to guess that the top button's going to be used for iPhones and such while the bottom will be used for Android smartphones and tablets or whatever. So yeah, I actually got this at um, at a store called Daiso, which is one of the shops that are in the 100 yen store category in Japan. Basically, it's like a dollar store that you would see in the U.S. And this item was 300 yen, so that's a little less than 3 U.S. dollars. So let's go ahead and take a look at this packaging. So a lot of these things are actually written written in English as well. Take pictures with your smartphone remotely. Okay. And what else? Oh. Even more convenient when used with separately sold mobile phone accessory, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, just an advertisement for something else that you can buy. And so here it talks about how to use this thing. Basically, you got to do some pairing by some special process. And yeah, just go through this process. And finally, so let's find out if we actually need some kind of special app to use this. Use inbuilt camera app to taking the photos or you can download the app of camera 360 from Google Ply if inbuilt camera cannot be supported. Okay, so broken English, but bottom line is you can probably use the built-in camera app of your phone, but if it doesn't work, you can go over to Google Ply and download an app called camera 360, I guess. Well, yeah, something like that. All right. Mm, some instructions in the back of how to use this thing. Yeah, okay, well. Yes, it needs a battery. A CR232 lithium battery. And yeah, it tells you how to put it in. Anything else special about this? Nothing particularly interesting, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Made in China as usual. And it actually has a technical conformance mark over here. Just to say that it conforms with the regulations... For devices that emit radio waves or whatever in Japan. So yes, this is legal to use in Japan. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. All right, so I just guess I have to open the box. I just ew, the box already. And there it goes. Nothing else is in there. All right, so we have our little remote control over here. Yeah, basically just made of plastic. Nothing too interesting. Ah, very good. It has a technical conformance mark along with a number that identifies this device. That's good. Yeah. Feels feels like a regular old garage door opener or something, but really cheap. Alright, and we have a ooh, an instruction manual that's like this. And the English text is in gray, so it's really difficult to see. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if this actually works. All right, so step one would be to actually put the battery into this little remote. So there's a, there's just a screw over here, so I'll go ahead and take that out. And take that out. Oops. Okay. And we take the cover off. Slide it, maybe? Yeah. Slide it. Oh, there's already a battery in there. That's great. That's nice. I didn't even notice. All right, so I didn't look at the box. Yeah, it actually says that. Oh, it says right over here. It says that a test battery is included. That's very nice. I didn't expect anything like this would actually contain a battery. So I just ended up getting a separate battery out, but really didn't need this. So yeah, it's kind of cool. It actually has the test battery inside, and basically, in order to use this thing, there's an on-off switch on the side of the remote, so we just have to turn that on in order to use it. So, let's... Right now, if you click any of the buttons, it doesn't seem like it really does anything, but once you turn it on... Uh, okay, it still doesn't really seem like it's doing anything. Okay, I guess I'll read the instructions now. 
All right, so I looked at instructions to see how to actually use this thing, and it says to do some pairing first. It says, turn on the shutter by switching the on-off button. Okay, f forget that. I can't understand what that English means, but it basically says, if you turn the switch on this thing on, it should go into the pairing mode and the LED should flash. Uh, the LED up here should be flashing, but it's not, so... Oh, wait. What? Okay, it started flashing, but it stopped flashing now. Anyway, turns out there's probably some kind of electrical contact that's not working really well. So as soon as I let... If I push down on the battery side, it seems like it starts flashing like this. As soon as I let go, it seems like it doesn't make that electrical contact anymore. So I don't know if, if it's my fault that I opened this up, which, I mean, there's screw, so I would expect it to be, be able to survive being opened up. But I don't know. For some reason, it seems like it doesn't want to work really well. So yeah, I can show you how that works. So yeah, here's the battery. The battery's in there. If I push it in strong enough, it flashes and it goes into pairing mode, but if a strong connection isn't there, it doesn't seem like it works really well. I guess I'll go ahead and close it up one more time and hope it works this time. There we go. And the screw seems a little bit stripped already. All right, hopefully it works this time. On. Seems like it's working now, that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and see if I can actually get this working. All right, so I have an Android smartphone over here, and this remote control shutter thing is flashing, so it's probably waiting to be paired. So I'm just going to go ahead to Bluetooth, and it says um, AB shutter 3 device should be showing up or something. So I'll go ahead and look for that. It should be showing up. Or not. Can't find the Bluetooth device. Come on. You know, it was kind of working when I was doing this off-camera, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, here it goes. Alright, so let's try it again. And this time the device shows up, so... Go ahead and click on that one. And it says to start up the camera application. All right, so I have my inbuilt camera app running now. Does that mean I can actually take a picture like this? Okay, maybe I need to do something more. Hold on. All right, so I started up my inbuilt camera app and I have my remote control shutter thing. Let's see if it actually takes a picture. There it goes. Oh, now that it works, it's pretty fun. Well, it turns out that, um, okay, it's getting disconnected, but yeah, it seems like this thing tends to get disconnected every once in a while, so it stops working like that, but, oh, it connects again. So it's kind of flaky a little bit, but um, what I ended up doing was I removed the original battery that was included in there for testing purposes, and I actually just put in a fresh battery in there, and it seems like it works a little bit better. Anyway, yeah, this is kind of cool when it works. Oh, it's pairing now again. Oh, well, anyway, when it works, it's kind of cool. Yes, one thing that I noticed was that this remote control shutter device actually gets recognized by the Android phone as a keyboard, and apparently these are keyboard pre presses of some sort to take pictures. So yeah, it seems like this works okay when it actually works. So yeah, I'll go ahead and take a look inside now. I'm just going to go ahead and jam this thing into this little opening over here and see if it's going to start. Oh, that was easy. And this chip over here is the brain of it all. This is the Bluetooth chip over here. 